Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Amy, guys, for having me here. I had no idea what Creative Mornings was uh, until they did invite me, and then I went online and did some investigation and went, oh, man, I'm involved something way bigger than I thought it was, and this is amazing. I want to thank you all for being here and showing support for um, for such a community-driven, awesome event, but then also to come see some tattoo guy on the theme of magic. When they asked me to speak about it, and I was like, speak on magic, uh, uh-oh, I don't know any, wait, I think I know. Remember this one? Here we go. Oh, it still gets my four-year-old every time. But honestly, what is magic? What is it? Magic is defined as an illusion meant to entertain using sleight of hand and deceptive devices. Okay, well then, in my opinion, art. Isn't that magic too? Lines, shapes, shades, colors. These are all the devices that are combined together to create art, to fool you, fool your eye, to see an illusion in front of you. Just like this sweet American traditional tattoo design here for you, which, by the way, is for sale if anyone's interested. Now, as Julia mentioned, I'm a career tattoo artist of nearly 17 years. I co-own Archetype Tattoo. I am the co-founder of the Guild of Ethical Tattooists and the governor-appointed chairman for the Board of Body Art Practitioners. So can anyone guess what my favorite type of art is? Well, I need... Pottery, yes. Under, underwater basket weaving. There you go. That's right. Hold on. Sorry, I had to air these guys out. All right, you guys are going to see them. More visual aids. Yes, tattoos are my favorite form of art. I love tattoos. I have loved them since I was a child, since the first time I'd ever seen them. Actually, 12 years old. As soon as I saw them and I, I figured out what they were, they were injections of pigment in the skin while well, I went home and started poking myself. And I did all kinds of weird stuff to my leg. And then by the age of 14, I had gotten tattooed in my friend's bedroom. Yeah. My mom was pissed. Oh man, She was irate. But she was awesome simultaneously. Because she told me, I know you want to do tattoos. I know you want to get tattoos. So if you wait until you're 16, I'll sign for you to get your first professional tattoo. Oh, yeah. I was stoked. I took that deal. And I remember my 16th birthday like it was yesterday. It was at CeeLo's Tattoo and Body Piercing in Alamogordo, New Mexico. <laughs> CeeLo was a six foot two big old scary biker. Oh, he was terrifying. He remember I, I sat down in his chair and he flopped my little 16 year old arm over his big old biker belly. He had his head cocked at the side and his eyes squinting because he didn't want the cigarette smoke to burn his eyeball. And he was hammering my arm. Eh, 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 eh. Oh, but halfway through, I was like, okay, this is my opportunity. I look over and I say, um, CeeLo, do you think you would teach me how to tattoo? <laughs> CeeLo stops tattooing, puts his machine down, looks up at me with his squinty eye and says, fuck you, kid. <laughs> Man, I was devastated. But you know what? I was motivated. <laughs> uh, I don't know, <laughs> but, uh, but I didn't let CeeLo or the next guy or the next guy or the next guy or next guy or next or half dozen people tell me to fuck off, kid, to get me down. I kept moving forward, and by the age of 20, I had found somebody to train me, and I'd become a professional tattoo artist. Now, the reason for me sharing this story with you, oh, goodness. You guys got slides going all over the place. The reason why I'm sharing this story with you is that it was very difficult to get into tattooing. This is 20 some years ago. You had to know somebody who knew somebody to get into the craft because it wasn't a master to apprentice style education because tattooing was passed on for thousands of years. In fact, check out my magic. We're gonna move it again. Tattooing is ancient. Our earliest known discoveries of tattoos is on a peat bog mummy carbon dated about 5200 BC. That's over 7,200 years old. Now, this mummy had over 58 tattoos on its body. And amazingly, 
after doing some x-rays on the body, they found that the places where the tattoo were placed were in places of acupuncture. Underneath those tattoos were places of degradation. So this teaches us that researchers believe that they must have had tattooing way beyond this, way before this. Because if somebody had a tattoo, if, if they needed to go see a medicine man or woman, then they had a place to inject those needles. Right? So tattooing was very, very old. And we can all agree that we watched the Discovery Channel and we've seen tattoos in virtually every culture, every creed, every nationality has some form of body art in it. And the ancient tattoos were very prestigious, meaning you had to, you had to earn them. Only the few had them. And they were arduous and painful. And in the Mediterranean and the Samoan cultures, the more tattooed you are, the more respect you were given, the higher you are on the totem pole, so to speak. And even some cultures still use tattoos for medicinal or, or spiritual purposes, where they can ward off evil spirits or, or elicit healing. Now, these ancient forms of tattooing were very painful, very time-consuming. Have you guys watched the Discovery Channel and see somebody do the old school where they're like tapping? They, they take a stick with bone shards in it and they start just jabbing into the flesh. Yeah. Does anybody want one of those? Oh, you do. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. It was very painful, time consuming. Very few people were able to do this. Sometimes an apprenticeship would take upwards to 18 years long. Now, this all changed towards the end of the 1800s when a man by the name of Samuel O'Reilly took one of Thomas Edison's inventions, the electric stencil pen, and created the first electric tattoo machine. Now, this made tattooing fast, easy, less painful. More and more people started to collect them. And then we started to see them in our early 1900s, where, yes, those who were collecting tattoos were typically sailors, bikers, gangsters, circus, individuals. But it still grew in our culture. More and more people accepted it. More and more people collected them. And it wasn't until a dozen years ago, yeah, who knows what this show is? I mean, virtually everyone here has seen Miami, or at least heard of it and know about it. This show, although it over-dramatizes us, and yeah, artists can be divas at times, it truly shows that tattoo artists aren't all like CeeLo from CeeLo's Tattoo and Body Piercing, that we are professionals, and that we can do some beautiful things in your flesh. And this show led into so many other shows like LA Inc., European Inc., New York Inc., Ink Master, Bad Tattoos, not Tattoo Nightmares, I don't know, they keep coming up. And then even individuals who are interested in this but don't want to get tattooed, they're still going out and getting clothing to make it look like they are tattooed too. So it has become a trend, and you guys can agree with that. Something that was this old taboo, like tattoo, is now something very popular, it's very trendy. In fact, in 2012, the Pew Research Center found that close to a quarter of the American population have at least one tattoo. Now, I'm in the industry, and business has not slowed down, my friends. It has picked up. Now, with this increased number of people wanting tattoos, well, there's a whole lot of people doing tattoos. And not all tattoo artists are created equal. Yeah, check out this sweet Pegasus. Yeah, bro, I got it. Sure. It takes years just to be able to pull a straight line or to do a smooth shade. Oh. Does anybody want to realize that you only life once and you want to make sure your tattoo artist is well educated in what he's doing? Well, yeah, bro, I can do that portrait for you, that sweet tiger. I've been doing this for years. Bad tattoos are obviously some of the risks of an, of an unprofessional tattoo artist. But unfortunately, this isn't the worst. Yeah. Now, scarring is very easy to do, right? We're, we're injecting ink molecules into the dermis layer. It is so very easy to penetrate through that level, hit the subcutaneous level, boom, blood hitting the, the fatty tissue and blowouts, scarring, permanent disfigurement. Or just keep running over that area a few times and you've got hamburger. And the one at the bottom to the left, using some poor quality inks and having an allergic reaction. So there's some true health risks to an unprofessional tattoo. 
We all know that through contaminated blood, we can contract things like hepatitis. Um, reusing pigment, reusing needles are the ways that we can transfer this. There's also staph, which is a bacteria, and his pissed off buff cousin, MRSA, which are true dangers of an unprofessional tattoo. Now, I have nurse clients, and just the other day I learned that the majority of the MRSA outbreaks in hospitals stem from the human nose. Yeah, that's pretty scary. Kind of makes you think twice when you rub your nose or you might want to scoot away from each other a little bit because you've been, who knows, you've been touching your nose. But imagine how easy it is just to do this and then shh, rub an open wound. Yeah. Now, the MRSA bacteria, if it makes its way into your bloodstream and your lungs, it could be potentially dangerous. Or I'm sorry, potentially lethal. And unfortunately, last November, a gentleman got tattooed up in Colorado by an unprofessional tattoo artist. His tattoo became so infected, his body went into a state of sepsis, and the individual died. So, uh, hopefully I'm not scaring you guys away from tattooing. No, no. <laughs> no you're never going to get tattooed around, right? This is a very, very rare case. But this is just to emphasize the importance of always seeking out a licensed professional. So that's when my business partner and I got together and realized we needed to do something about this. So we created the Guild of Ethical Tattooists. We are an educational organization built to espouse health and safety information about body art and tattoos. We go out and we teach. Now we've been given reports from children as young as 12 and 13 at Wilson Middle School that are tattooing each other. We've had to go out and show them these scary pictures, which are quite effective. <laughs> We've gone out to Del Norte High School and New American High School, and there are 16-year-old children, or young adults, 16-year-olds with full sleeves done at their house. Yeah. We've gone out to New Day and have taught some of the homeless teenagers to obviously wait until adulthood to get tattooed, and then definitely, definitely, definitely don't get tattooed on the streets. We also use our artistic ability to do good things in the charity, charitable community, we do Art Fusion for a Cause. Is anybody familiar with this? Okay, cool few of you guys there. Art Fusion for a Cause is a phenomenal event. We do it every second Wednesday of the month at Tractor Brewery. This is where we get multiple artists from around the city to come and collaborate, create really cool pieces of artwork, which we sell raffle tickets the whole time, and then each, after each night, we give all of the proceeds we generate to a different charity each month. And we just did Art Fusion for a Cause last, just this Wednesday night for the New Mexico Autism Society and raised in two and a half hours, $1,000 in $5 increments. So uh, I'll definitely talk more about it later, guys. You guys are gonna come check it out. But the Guild of Ethical Tattooists are out there teaching. We're trying to make people aware of the health and safety aspects of tattooing, urging those kids to avoid it completely. And then for those who are interested in getting tattooed, what you should be looking for. Now, here in the state of New Mexico, we require a body art practitioner's license. This means that we are bloodborne pathogens, first aid and CPR certified, and we've had at minimum 1,400 accredited apprenticeship hours. Basic, basic, basic stuff. First thing you should be looking for, where's your license? Okay, there's your license. Now, has the state come and inspected your facility? Here in New Mexico, it is completely illegal to operate outside of a licensed establishment. So those of you that may have friends that are working out of their place, it's completely illegal. A thousand dollar fine each time they're caught tattooing. But you should make sure that the state has come through and shown that this facility is compliant. Fuzzy letters, I know you guys can't see it well, but see this little red thing that says pass. You wanna see that. Now after you've made sure they had that license, the inspection's been good, what up next? Well, you gotta make sure they have the proper equipment to safeguard your health. Who knows what an autoclave is? Very cool. An autoclave uses heat and pressure to sterilize tools. Now each month it should be tested, a spore test. Now that's where we put spores in the autoclave and make sure it'll kill it. We send it off to a third party, they send back a, a thumbs up. You should ask to see that. After you've sent those licenses, you say, I wanna see a past spore inspection. Now if they won't show you that, either they don't know what you're talking about or it hasn't passed. Now each one of these tools that goes in, goes in a sterilized pouch, which then goes in the autoclave, and it has a color change indicator on it. Now, if you can see this little pinkish color here, and a little brownish color there, you should ask to see that before they, while they're opening up their tools before every procedure. And then everything this artist is gonna be touching during it should be covered in plastic barrier films. Now, I've been tattooing for 17 years, and I've seen some pretty interesting things over my time. 
And I remember watching this tattoo artist once, working, tattooing, sat up, put his machine down, picked up his cell phone, answered it with dirty gloves on, talked on it, put it down, picked up his machine, and went back to work. Now, what is the most, one, of the, one of the most dirtiest things at any given time in any given room is our cell phone. I just let Julia touch mine. I don't know what was on her hands, and now it's on my cell phone. Whatever is on that cell phone could be transmitted right into a body. So you want to make sure that everybody, or that everything this artist is going to be touching is covered in a plastic barrier foam. That they have, they need to have a biohazard container so they're disposing of the sharps properly. And then everything in their facility should be clean and clutter-free. Now that means from the floor to the ceiling, everything should be sanitizable. Now, it means no porous surfaces. You guys, no carpet, no fabric, nothing for blood or vomit or urine or whatever to get soaked up in there. So you would be able to sanitize everything. Theoretically, you should be able to eat off of every surface in this area. So, so far we feel feeling pretty good. I'm getting these blank stares like this is a class. Like, I thought you were gonna talk about magic and tattoos. Well, this is all the, this is all the boring stuff that all my peers, unfortunately, not all of them, majority of them overlook. They step past these things. There's all about the cool end product. But all of these steps are so very necessary to safeguard your health. You want to see everything up to this point. But what else should you see after, you, after you've made sure that the facility is good? What's next? Can I get any? What would you want to see? There you go. Thank you very much. You want to see their work. You want to see what they're doing. You want to see if what they can do is the kind of artwork that you want to have on you. Now, you can look at their portfolio through a book or through their social medias, but in my opinion, the best way to interview an artist's artwork is to get up close and personal with it. Be able to see something they've done on other people. Get up close. Make sure there's no scars or lesions or pustules or amputations, you know, things like that. Make sure that it looks good and the kind of stuff you want to have on your body. And then the, the last part is you want the full package. Right? You want that artist who's going to do all of these things for you. They've walked you. They showed you their license. They showed you their autoclave. They've shown you their, their facility, their portfolio. Now you want to make sure that you're, you're comfortable with this person because you're going to be spending a lot of time with them. Right? You're going to be spending a lot of time sitting down and getting tat with, tattooed with them. Now, when I tattoo people or when you get tattooed, you're in a very intimate procedure. Right? Those, are, those of you who have tattoos, you sit down, you spend a lot of time with them, right? Yeah, you get to know them. They're, they're having you sit very still while we stick a needle in your skin and cut your flesh. There's a lot of trust there. There's a bond that's built. And it has become my, my mission and my passion is for people to become aware of these things, that they should, if they want a healthy, safe procedure, that they want to find that artist that's going to be able to do the, take you through the steps that I have just taken you through. So, <laughs> ending with the whole part of going through these steps is so that you can find a tattoo artist who can give you the type of body art which will bring magic into your lives, my friends.